<laughs> hey guys, Long Haul Larry, Big Blue. Just a little different view than what you usually see of Big Blue. Um, we got our motor here, and we got ourselves it all cleaned up. Everything's all ready to go back together. Got the bell, the flywheel housing down here. This is all ready to go back together and everything. Uh, once in a while, if you hear kind of a roaring noise, that's my heater. It's cold here. It's it's probably 15 degrees out or something like that. So my heater kicks on and off. There's a thermostat on it. So we're going to start piecing this together. Um, we did end up putting a new pipe over here. I think you can see that on the camera. Um, this is a uh, coolant manifold. And the old one, I don't know what I did with it. I think I threw it out. Oh, up there it is. I can't reach it. Um, the joints where some of these pipes are on it, they were they were really starting to rust, and you could see this one right here was actually starting to come apart, and it looked like it was about ready to leak. Um, it was all rested right there and everything, and uh, John over at JVG Travels, he actually stopped and picked me Owen up on his travels, because he was coming here anyways, and he was able to find one at a dealer and picked it up and brought it to me, so we got that replaced. You know, hoses here and there, I can fix a hose on the road or whatever, but this thing right here, mighty hard to fix. Because <laughs> if you got that transmission in there, it's it's hard to get it in and out of there. So it's a good thing we found one so we can put that in there and that's all taken care of. So first of all, got ourselves our new gasket right here. So we'll just put that up on there. this up there and get the starter out of the way at the same time it keeps wanting to move all right guys we got her in there let me just put a little bit of oil On the threads. And on the washer too. I use these old uh, ketchup bottles, I get them. Like Walmart, you can get them. For like a dollar for a pair. I get these and put like fluids and stuff in them. And it's right on them, oil.
head in the way. Now we gotta check for for throw out. There we go. There we go. What we're doing is, um, I'm going to go out front and I'm going to turn the crank. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn this around. And as I get around over here, it'll give me a reading. Go up to the 6, 12 o'clock, give me a reading. 9 o'clock, give me a reading. And then I'll compare those readings. I can still move this just a tiny bit. I can take a, loosen up a little bit, take a hammer, give it a tap up, check it again and everything else. So, so I will be back. I gotta go turn it. Hey anyway, guys, I had to switch over cameras. I guess when I was gone, camera died. I don't know how much that I captured, but um, it came out okay. So we're all good to go. One, all right, now we gotta turn this thing up. I only had it for 90, 92. Snug them all just a little bit and go back to torquing them. All right, well, we need to start torquing them. We got the torque cranked up on here.
Tucker. Sleep. <laughs> right on my hip. Uh, if you're wondering what I was doing there, going all over the place, uh, that's off the Cummings website. That's the that's the the torque pattern. That's the way they want you to torque it in that order. I have my ta my tablet down there, and I have a picture of it up on there. So we got them all torqued up now. So now uh, we'll throw the seal in. Get that done. All right, it's time to throw this seal in here. Basically what a seal is, is it's got like a real hard, kind of almost like a rubber in here, but it's real hard. It'll kind of, it'll bond to the crankshaft here and seal that. And then this is rubber on here. And this is two parts. There's two parts to this. And this, and this will bond to the out part outside of here, to the flywheel housing and it'll spin you, you can't get it to spin by hand if you try to but um it'll spin and that keeps the oil in here you always want to put these concave parts like this you want to put it in towards your oil just like before got me a little ketchup bottle and this is just soap. It's uh, soapy water. Just position it on there. seal installer here. do is just <clears throat> snug it up by hand. Don't need this extension. Basically what you want to do is you want to do a half a turn each. flywheel on.
Got one bolt in. Okay, guys, we gotta torque this uh, flywheel down. Okay. Hey. Stopper fell out. got a bit of torque on it. Once again, I have a diagram that I'm looking at on my, my tablet sitting here. It's telling me which one, which pattern to go in. wondering why I clicked the uh, torque wrench twice. I have no idea. I've always done it. I don't know why people have asked me that. And I can't tell you the answer. I hate, I hate flywheel bolts. They got these stupid heads on them. Oh, that's a lot for one hand. Well guys, let's put this clutch on in. Um, basically, you got your pilot bearing, which is right here. And right here is the shaft. This is actually simulating um, the shaft, the, the output shaft of the transmission. Right now it has the whole clutch assembly on it. It's all lined up. And all we need to do is line it up with this here pilot bearing. Put our bolts in there and everything. And tighten it all up. And we'll pull it away. See, need is to loosen, take some of the pressure off. And you pull it out. What you can see here is this is an exact replica of the output shaft of a transmission and this is where that pilot bearing rides on so it lines that up and then all the splines that are inside the clutch they all go into these grooves and then the diameter of it so it lines everything up straight so when I put the transmission in there it should just bloop go right in it never works bloop right in but you gotta do lots of wiggling and everything else, but you get in. Basically now what we have to do is push this here transmission right up into that hole. <laughs> it can be a little tricky. 
put it in gear first. Let's go if we get a runny start. We should just be able to push it right in, right? Anybody who's done one of these is going, no. Oh. This is the tricky part in putting this motor in. These, this here, this right here, is actually your clutch arm. This is what, when you depress on the clutch up in the truck, it pulls this backwards, it goes that way, and which pulls your throwout bearing, which is connected onto your plates. Not really the plates, but the, the pads in it. And it separates them, and that's what, it, that's what lets it out of gear. Then when it comes backwards, then everything is spring tight and then your clutch engages. The problem is, is you got to make sure that you're lining this up as you're pushing it through here. Because I got it to push a little while ago and it went in quite a bit. And I stopped and I went up here and this bar was back here on this side of it. So I had to push it back out, get this past here and I just gave a little push and just just cleared it so I just got a little bit little bit keep coming up here pushing on this arm and we'll be good to go just keep working it in there one way that you can tell if it's straight or not on the top and the bottom is to look up there and just basically see the gap up on the top and on the bottom here and I can tell you that I'm still crooked it's a lot tighter it's probably half inch or so tighter up there the gap is about half inch less than it is down here. Um, I'd use a tape measure, but I can't get up there. <laughs> I can't get my hands up there and hold the tape measure at the same time. So, so just kind of eyeball it. Just keep wiggling it. So I'm going to drop the rear end down some more, and and then um, try to wiggle it. And I can see that I'm further over here too than I am over here. So the back end has to go that way a little bit. That's really not such a big deal because you you wiggle the whole transmission side to side as you're pushing it in, and then once it hits its mark, it's just gonna boop, it's gonna go right in. Just takes a little bit of back and forth. 